What's up, YouTube? This is 2Raw4 TV. Alright. So, before I get into this video, I want to give a big shout out to the brother JJ Phantom for the donation to the channel via the Cash App. Leaves a note saying, Brian going to trade for Kyrie and say they top heavy. <laughs> yeah, more than likely. Yeah, more than likely. You know, it's, all, it's always going to be something, you know. It's always going to be something. And it's like I say, you know, like we all know, it's never going to be his fault. It's never his fault. It's management or the teammates or AD or it's going to be Kyrie's fault. Or somebody else, you know. But anyway, much respect to you for showing love to the channel. I truly appreciate it. So, I want to talk about this thing that Scottie Pippen said about Michael being a losing player before he got there, right? And th the reason why I know that's such a ridiculous statement is because I know the history of the Chicago Bulls. See, he, he gives this perception that, he give, he'll he give young people the perception that the Bulls were a good team or something, right? And then Michael came there and they just start sucking because he was a ball hog. And then they, they weren't winning. And then Scotty comes and he's the savior. Like, he, you know, he's, he comes there and with his unselfish play, uh, gets the ball out of Mike's hands and opens up the offense. And then all of a sudden they become a great team. That's, that's the perception that Scotty's putting out there. But in reality, that's bullshit. Okay? Um, the Chicago Bulls, I believe they became a franchise in the 66-67 season. And initially, I think they were an Eastern Conference team. But then they moved to the West sometime in the 70s and then they moved back to the east where they've been permanently since but they were a bottom feeder team for so many years now during the 70s they had some pretty good years when you know they had Norm Van Leer uh, the late uh, Jerry Sloan they had um, you know uh, Chet Walker after his days with the Sixers you had uh Bob Love, you know, uh, Tom Burrowinkle, those years. They, they had a really good squad. But then as that team aged and, and faded away, then they had years with Artis Gilmore. Now, Artis Gilmore was a great player, but they weren't winning. So, look, I just went and looked at several seasons before Mike got there. Several seasons before. 1976-77. This is the tail end of their little uh, golden years in the in the uh, 70s. This is when they were in the West Conference. <coughs> By the way, they were 44 and 38 that year. Then the very next year, the 1977-78 season, the Bulls were 40 and 42. So that's a losing record. The very next year, 1978-79, the Bulls were 31 and 51. 1979-1980, the last year in the Western Conference, they were 30 and 52. These are not great teams, ladies and gentlemen. These are very bad teams. Now, you could say, okay, well, maybe things turned around when they went to the East, starting in 1980. They did show improvement. 1980-81, their first year in the Eastern Conference, they were 45 and 37. But that's also the first year that Larry Keenan was added to the franchise. I think he came over from the Spurs. Um, he signed as a free agent in 1980, but that would be his only really effective, like, strong year with the uh, Chicago Bulls. The very next year, 1981-82, the Bulls went 34-48. Uh, 34-48. and 48. Now, after that year, I think Artis Gilmore signed with the San Antonio Spurs. 
and the bottom fell out. 82-83, this is before Michael Jordan got there now, they were 28-54. Now, I think after that year, I think they traded Reggie Theus to the Kings, I believe it was. And then the year before Michael got there, 83-84, well, it may have been that year, but anyway, one of those two years, 83-84, 82-83, they traded Reggie Theus. So 82-83, the Bulls are 28-54. 83-84, the Bulls are 27-55. and So they were a terrible team long before Michael Jordan got there. As a matter of fact, his first year there, they improved 11 victories. From 27 wins the year before, to 38 victories his rookie year. As a matter of fact, he was credited with 14 uh, win shares when you look at advanced metrics. And, you know, the next year you can't really count because he only played in 18 games in limited minutes uh, after the foot injury. But you kind of get the impression that when you look at the fact they went 30 and 52 that year, right? But they were nine and nine in the eighteen games that he played in, but twenty one and forty three in the games that he missed, and they won thirty games. I get the impression that they probably would have won about forty games or so had he been uh healthy um, maybe about forty forty one games, but anyway. 86-87, the last year he played without Scottie Pippen, the Bulls were 40-42. and 42. All right? Now, this is after they lost George Gervin. Although he was fading, he still had some punch left. He went overseas, I think, playing in Italy. And they lost Orlando Woolridge, who was a 20-point-per-game scorer. So Michael had to take on even more of the offense and a really weak team where their second-best scorer was Charles Oakley. And they still won 40 fucking games. And he was credited with damn near 17 win shares that year. 16.9. Which sort of means that without his input, without his presence on the team, they may not even won 25, well, they may not even won 23, 24 games. So this losing player narrative makes no sense to me. And it really makes no sense considering the fact that Scottie Pippen didn't really come into his own until 89-90. But Scottie was drafted in 87. They won 50 games in 87-88. And yeah, Scottie was there. But he only averaged 7 points per game. And people also forget about the presence of Horace Grant. I don't know why it is that when it comes to the first three-peat, people magically forget about Horace Grant. You know what I'm saying? In some of those playoff series, Horace Grant was more productive than Scottie Pippen in some of those games. And for all of the praise that Scottie Pippen gets, and he does, should he should get a lot of praise. Without Michael Jordan, when he had his chance to be a leader with that Portland Trailblazer team, which was a championship-level team, he failed in 2000. Without Michael Jordan, he failed. And every other situation in the playoffs without Michael Jordan, he failed. So anyway, that's all I got to say this one. Tell me what you guys think.